Okay, I'm hoping to finish up the last four bags in this installment of the Atari video computer system. This is by Lego, and I believe the set number is 10306. So, we're going to be doing bags 13, 14, 15, 16, and that'll be it. So, it doesn't really tell us what we're going to be doing today in terms of what are we doing, but we're just going to start. So, last time we pretty much built this. It was like two bags just to build this piece and some other stuff. So, let's slide. Well, let me just put this over here. We'll begin. So. And i got to remember not to slide this around on the table. Just pick it up and don't be lazy, Jay. Okay, so now we got to move everything out of the way. I was working on a tutorial idea, and I just remembered I had to finish this up. So that's pretty much what I'll be doing for this build. It's just finishing up these last four bags. And yes, you know, I could be doing a tutorial now, so but I don't have really anything... Completed. I got ideas started, but that's just like brainstorming, and we got a mosquito in here. Never can find anything to kill him. Well, <laughs> he won't be. He won't be joining us in the build anymore. And. Let's just get on the build here. Now, the last couple of installments have been very pleasant. There has been stickers in this build, not too majorly, like, just heavily stickered, but it's still kind of uh, a bit of an annoyance. So, open today, we can wrap up this project and see what it looks like. And I'm hoping I can squeeze in the review and just get this behind me, not because I don't enjoy the build, because I want to get on to my own, you know, my own personal projects. And kind of leads up to a rant today, and I cannot get this last one in here. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, apparently there was a Fall Appreciation Day, like in mid-July, and... It was only good if you went to a physical Lego store. And you could have gotten like a 10 or 15% discount on some stuff. And that sounds pretty fine and dandy, except for, you know, what if you don't live close to a Lego store? And we're going to be building a mirror here, so I'll slide that off to the side. You know, and you hear some that go, well, why don't you just carpool with somebody or go to your nearest thing or make a trip out of it. Well, I don't feel like wasting gas and stuff to just go to a, a Lego store, especially if I'm the ambassador. <laughs> and I was on the Ambassador Network, and apparently there were a few people that were saying, what about for communities like us, who mostly work remotely, did you know, digitally? You know, my community spread all out all across the world. And most of us don't even live within the proximity of a Lego city, a, a Lego store, let alone a city. You know, I don't live close to a city. I live close to a few towns, but Lego stores are far and few. And, and so, a fall appreciation day was not appreciative at all because you know, there's some of us out there who just, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not moving into a city just to be close to shopping. You know, that's why I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, just to avoid all that. You know. All right. So 
we just saved ourselves some time. We're going to need this again. And I'm not sure what goes here. So these go on both sides. It looks like they just butt up against here. Let's make sure here. That's exactly what they do. Just press those down in there. And just trusting my table, though, is never good enough. But that was my rant. I didn't want to say it on the Ambassador Network and be like, you know, you guys are kind of singling a lot of us out who don't live close to a brick and mortar store. And that's just how they are. Let's take a look here. I'm checking for something here and seeing if this is a mirror. Um, it appears that it is. Okay. So, you all know me. I like to do things with mirrors. Why do I do that? If you're new, um, you know, I can always watch the earlier parts. I explained it, but for those who just choose not to do that, um, I'll put this here. Basically, it speeds the build process up a bit more instead of just sitting and doing one step, finishing it up, and go, oh, I could have just mirrored it. It's more riskier. But then again, you know, it's just easier doing it this way, like that. This is the main model, this is the mirrored model. Okay. Alright. Yeah, but I was sitting there reading all the complaints about the ambassador or the uh, A fall appreciation. I was just. Like, oh, you just need to sign up for it and stuff. Oh, cool. Great. So I did all that, right? Just for them to say, oh, well, we're sorry. You're not special enough. Because you don't live close to a store, so you're, well, you're SOL'd. So, it's just how it is. There's a few communities on there complaining about that, and I don't blame them. So these are a new type of Technic brick. Or maybe they're, well, they're new to me. All right. So as you can tell, I'm, let's do it like this. I am following the book as closely as I can just by doing this. Okay. Now, um, and I've said this in the past though, but if you don't think you can digest this or understand it, just, you know, you don't have to do this, but always read ahead though. We're always taught that in school. So just read ahead and you'll be fine, you know. Yeah, I swear, this whole bag here, there was another one we did that was just full of Technic. That's exactly what we're doing here. <laughs> Must be the little removable top mechanism here. Okay. And then we skip a hole, place this one here, skip a hole here. Okay. Same thing on this one. Basically, it's just the second hole from both ends, like this. So, make it a little easier. We got to stack another one of those on top of one another. Oh, it's even got a one to one, too. How adorable! We could just line up the size and be done. I think that goes on there like that. Yep. Okay. All right. 
So now it's going to get a little, a little slimy here. We're going to skip these two holes and stick this in there, or the cross axle is facing us, or facing upwards. And the same thing over here too. So. It's like this, but it's easier to put them in like that. And this Technic stuff, it just takes forever to find all the parts. This is stuff that I commonly never use in my own builds, so trying to find everything is a, eh, it can be a bit of a chore. And then, oh, there's two more at the ends on the top portion of this, right here. They're buried, and they had an arrow pointing to them, but I'm glad they did, because I would have just completely skipped those. Yeah, I got still got to figure out where I'm going to put all these sets at. A friend of mine just she doesn't want to live in a toy store. She's like, oh, I prefer not to live in a toy store. All right, let's start with the simple thing first. We'll stick these here. Okay, so I got to make two of these. One in reverse. And let's see here. This would be the one I'm focusing on. Looks like the pipe is sticking straight up. So now we're doing plumbing. So that's how the Atari works, huh? It's got plumbing inside. Must be the right ones, but that maybe they'd be cross axles, but they're not. All right. All right. So this we're going to have to really pay attention here. So assuming it's going here. like this tube lines up with this shows it right there so if it lines up with that you're fine um, so if you're stumped there or you're kind of oh, I'm trying to find a place to put this so it doesn't keep falling down um, so we got that mirrored that we just did it's the same thing right here oh yeah when they were um, doing the whole A-Fall Appreciation Day. There's one person out there who uh, was literally just stocking up on parts for resale. <laughs> it's like, seriously? You're going to ruin it for everybody else and then none of us, like people like myself who never get a chance to visit these stores, we will never know because you're too busy trying to line your pockets and you know and there was always been oh Jay don't you sell your leftover bricks no I hoard this stuff I don't ever sell why would I <laughs> yeah, there's no point there's seven of these that's three Oh, there's ten, my bad. I was like, well, there's six. Well, there's five there. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's actually five that go in here. <laughs> it's a lot of pieces. But I, I just bought all this, and I'm going to put them in my 
auction store so you guys can buy them on a markup. And I'm just thinking, why would I want to buy Lego bricks on a markup when I can just go to Lego themselves or go to Bricklink? Well, that's why I try to buy from Lego directly. Some people say it's expensive. Well, it's not expensive when you have to deal through all the shipping and handling fees. Some stores waive that if you buy a certain amount, but some don't. They're like, oh, no, we want you to pay more. Well, I'm not paying any more than I have to. Now, since I'm in the Ambassador Network, uh, sharing my skills and sharing my love for this building stuff, you know, there's no need to do that. Okay, so now we take this again. And this is the one that goes... Well... Maybe I got them confused. It shows it like this. Maybe the pipe's facing the wrong way. No, the pipe, the pipe is facing down, so it goes like this, I think. That's what it looks like it does. Well, this is kind of like an elaborate setup here, you know, to really lock that in. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is probably a stop, but there's nothing here. So... This is what I'm worried about, is this right here. And you come and look here. It looks like it's just resting on it. There's nothing connected to that. So, it could either be a locking mechanism or a stop or something for when this thing slides out. I don't know. We, we won't know because we, well, we haven't built it yet. starting to warp in the middle. So we build the other one here and I'm just gonna blast through that. There we go. So we're done. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what they did. Okay, they left this stuff out here on purpose. Alright. And the reason being, and this is just what I'm guessing here, is when we work on this, this doesn't break and flake apart on us. Okay. So. So these here were left out on purpose. Well, that's why it was left out because it, and you know what, I can't get that. <laughs> Make me reach down and get it. Okay. So now we got a gray hand here floating in space telling us to lift this up and to slide this in. Okay, so you got to hold this. And we still need these. I saw them in the latter part of the build. So lift this up. And this, I believe, goes right here. So. Let me make sure here. So you just slide these two Technic pieces underneath these two plates here. Okay. And this just slides. Okay. So this, this is what it does here. I think that would go all the way in, but that's as far as it goes. <laughs> Maybe there's something we're missing or something. Maybe that's how it is. And, whoops, I skipped a page. So this is what we're going to be working on here. So. And this is ready for 18 and up, but you know, sometimes, you know, it just depends. Could a little kid put this together? Probably so. Um, 
it shows it down with these here. Okay, I see what that does. I had to really pull that, but of course I didn't put the other one in too. So basically, looks like it would fit up in there. But it actually stops up against these plates. So it's never meant to close all the way up. So I bet you just pull on this and this just pops out. Um, yeah, I mean, not a bad idea. This really glides pretty smooth too for it not having any kind of rollers. And that's it for bag 13. That's the only thing we had left. <laughs> All right, do I need to worry? This is actually a bigger container. I had to put some stuff in, so let's take a look here. And looks like on the bottom we're putting some glider plates and some tiles. Okay, so let's pour all this out here. Well, we're really making this realistic, are we? Yeah, that did not want to come apart. Okay. We have some rubber bands in that little container there. Alright, so we got to flip this thing upside down and just kind of really carefully move it around and stuff like that. So, um, get this more in frame for you. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to place some 4x4, 2x2 flat tiles in these corners. And they're the inverted ones. So just have to slowly dig them in or dig them out and put them on here. So they're really making this realistic. And I'm taking it this right here is to prevent this from sagging in. Now this feels pretty sturdy, so you can press pretty firm on it. Just don't like really press down on it or stand on it or anything like that. You don't want to have a catastrophic error occur. And of course, everything wants to fall down. At least it's not some round piece, but still, I need to upgrade this because all the sets that I've been getting lately are very big. I mean big, I mean they just, they don't fit on a table this size. When I made this, this is meant for like little tutorials. Um, it works good for tutorials, but not for, you know, this more involved stuff. I believe this one goes in the middle. So I'm missing that one flat tile and that. I'm sorry you can't see the whole thing, but and the lights glary and stuff. But that's the beauty of doing these is that they're meant to be raw, uncut. Matter of fact, I was looking for a video clip um, on YouTube and the only thing I could find was filtered and censored. And you know, here's the deal. If you're going to have to filter all the bad words, the bad language, make it beep, make noises, why don't you just not cuss in your stuff then? Or just mute it. Or use filler noise. Sometimes I'll say a bad word or something just comes out wrong and I just like, ooh, you know, how do you do this? Do I just cut out that segment? Do I use the annoying beep? Or do I just mute it out and put some filler noise? Usually I do that like you hear the white noise in the background. I'll sit there and I'll just use a clip of that and just fill it in. Sometimes I'll maybe say something that's a little inappropriate. For, you know, because some people watch these with their families and stuff. And to hear the beeping noise, when I go on YouTube, I don't expect to even hear that. When I hear that, it's just like, oh. Why don't I just thumbs it down then? Okay. So, indeed, I just noticed something. This is actually supposed to fit in more. 
I'm wondering if these pieces here are in backwards. I'm going to take a look here and find out. Yeah, they are in backwards. Okay, well, we found a mistake. Now, how do we tackle this here? How does this come out? Well, I'm just going to have to peel it apart a little bit here. Oh, I could just do this, huh? Just go like that. Is it that simple? Just press that back down in there. Well, it's, well we got to do the other one. <laughs> Pop that loose and flip it backwards. Alright. Okay, now this thing should just go all the way in. Perfect. So yeah, it's supposed to have that revealed. And it's still pretty good too. Well, what's catching that to do that? But it's pretty solid. I mean, you look under here, it's seamless. I mean, it's pretty good. Alright. Let me browse through this here. Let's see what this is. Okay, this is the control panel here. Okay. So I think the remainder of this is just the controls. Let's turn it this way here. I mean, it looks like an Atari now. I bet they pretty much had mapped out how they're going to do this. I try to do that too on my stuff, is try to make them as close as possible to... Well, it's like that little TV I built. You know, now uh, TVs are 16.9, and the one I built was 16.9, but it's hard to find a 4.3 aspect LCD TV. Let alone a monitor for that matter, so... Two by twelves or one by twelves, my bad. So this is the part that's going to fill in that hole there. You still got to do another cartridge too. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was supposed to go to the dentist this week for a cleaning and a checkup. I don't know what happened, but the hygienist wasn't there. And they say they're looking for, they're trying to hire a, a new hygienist. And I was like, okay. Well, the next available appointment's not going to be until September. And I thought, really? I said, well, I need to have a checkup. Oh, we could still do that. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to need one. Yeah, I just thought, you know, there's no way, you know, for me as a business guy, I've only had to do that one time to cancel appointments. But it was due to a, a catastrophic event in my family. I just had to do it, you know. But these guys keep postponing, and I'm kind of now leery because they can they'll text me again says oh we're gonna have to change it again and usually when they do that I'm like do I need to find someone else I got some printed stuff here and I mean I mean under, you know the way everything is right now I understand you know with COVID and the monkeypox stuff going on but to constantly cancel things and I don't mind showing them my vax card if that's what they want one time they had they, they wanted me to show it I had to show it to them which it didn't bother me some people it freaks them out over it like well what personal information can they get out of that I need to buy some of these right here they're like a a one by four by two thirds half round brick with bow or something. I 
I need to buy a couple of these. Oh, wait a minute, this goes on the front. But, I thought, um, you know, you don't need to cancel everything. You know, sometimes some people do. But it, it's just, I, 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 I thought, you know, you know, with all these businesses, you know, struggling and they're scared of a, what is it, a recession or something like that, I'm like, well, this is not the time to start canceling things. <laughs> because there may be a day where it's like, oh, I need to, I need to get some customers in my, my establishment. Well, I'm sorry, I'm somewhere else now. Unless you're willing to give me a discount. It's like a haircut. I remember haircuts were real cheap. They were like 25 bucks. Now they're like 35 And you want to get a fade? Well, yeah, that's an extra five dollars. <laughs> At least I go to. It's about close to fifty dollars now. I mean, I understand it and stuff. So, uh, some of my family now are cutting their own hair and. Say, well, we can cut your hair, and I'm like, yeah, I'll think on it, but probably not. <laughs> um, I don't feel like having a buzz cut anytime soon. Just not my style, not my cup of tea. But it, it's just, it's sad, you know, everything's kind of gone up in price. And even Lego, some Lego stuff has gone up in price, like 5 or $10 a build. It just depends on how elaborate the build is. And it was overdue eventually. But it's just the point of, you know, a lot of people just don't want to... Like for me, it's like I don't want to pay more for things like gas. You know, it's out here it's like $7 a gallon. and It doesn't slow anybody down. They're still driving like maniacs. I mean, they like paying extra for gas, I guess. Not sure what we're putting in here. Maybe this is the part that sticks out. I don't know what it is yet. Okay, so we got to build a mirror here. It's on the same page too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, Lego is just. They even told us on the ambassador thing, like, hey, we're raising up our prices on things and. On, you know, on certain sets, they're just jacking up the price, and it's like the Speed Champions. I didn't know what the price was. I assumed fifty dollars, and you know, some people took me seriously on them. So, like now, I won't even mention the price like this. I don't know what it is, and I won't dare mention the price because I just don't know what it is. Twenty-five hundred pieces, probably two hundred to three hundred dollars, but don't hold my quote. Don't quote me on that one. Don't say well that's what Jay said because I don't even know that kind of thing where my viewer says oh we gotta be careful Jay people will believe you they can I mean they, they can just do their own research but no I mean some don't and it's kind of biting me in the rear so now I I won't say anything. <laughs> um, this tile here in the corner is just barely hanging on. Oh, I see. We've got to slide it even with this. Yep. Yeah. You know, I've never really used these except for bumpers and rain gutters for houses. And to see them in orange is, it's a bit different. Just a bit. Well, 
Oh yeah, though, speaking of a haircut, I still need to get that done. When it gets too hot, it's like, do I really care? <laughs> well, my head will thank me once I get this mop cut off. I'm starting to look like a TikToker more than anything else. I'm starting to look unkept. I don't know what I'm saying anyways, because trust me, if I was in my late teens or 20s, I, I definitely probably would be doing that fad too. There's a co-worker that I work with, and he's in his 40s, same, around the same age as I am, and he uh, has the uh, pink hair, and I'm just like, really? He goes, oh, I decided to do it. Let's see what it looked like. And he's like, oh man, I hope you're not mad or anything. I'm like, I'm not mad. <laughs> it just didn't look right, you know. And yes, you got to tuck those tiles under there. And I'm like, I used to be all into that whole crazy colored hair thing and stuff like that. I had a few colors in mine, and well, that just let me just pop that out then. In fact, he could have just stuck this on later. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> not that I'm older, but you get older, your face, look, you, you get more mature, your face looks more mature, and it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't look good, you know, I mean, you know, to me, I have a lot of growing up still to do, <laughs> it's not going to benefit me at all, and to host a meeting and walk in there with bright blue hair would not be very, honestly, I mean, I wouldn't care. I don't care, especially today, because you know I'm more for the younger generation. You know, things have changed and stuff like that. But hmm, that's crooked there. That's why. But for somebody like myself, yeah, I got at least grow up in appearance-wise. Okay, so we're going to be building two Technic things, and. I'm not sure what these are. So, it's almost like I'm missing a page here. Alright, I'm going to show you something. They jumped way too, too fast here. I didn't even know there was Technic bricks behind there. So, oh, wait a minute. How silly of me, it's on these brackets. Okay, we've got to make two of these. the ball hitch thing. I mean, it's just, though, about the the pink hair. I mean, honestly, though, I mean, I've had Fuchsia, I've had Fuchsia one time, and that was enough for me. And yes, some people call me some pretty colorful names. <laughs> Is it this? I'm missing two ball hitch things. Oh, here's one. So we need to put these at the bottom. I gotta find the other one. It's pretty small, so that's probably why I'm having a hard time finding it. Oh, here it is. But it's just, it's of course, it's the same thing with the piercings. You know, there's a lot of guys now. That's like in my area. Out where I live and stuff like that. It's not really kosher for dudes to have pierced ears, but I really don't care. <laughs> no, I, I just don't. You know, it's, some people judge you on how you look, not necessarily on the experience or the knowledge. And I think these are the little buttons that go on the front where it's like reset and game select and stuff Atari was pretty much ahead of its time for the time 
but it's not, not anymore. And we're not done yet. This is a little, two little items that we have to build here that are falling out of the hand. I swear it seems like about maybe 10 or 15 percent of this is probably Technic. Put a one by two brick in between these two. They show them sticking straight up. Mine are slouching down, but of course, that's just how things are. If they're like this, but mine, mine just droop down. So we'll see where we're going here with this. I mean, I've already made it already made a mistake on that already. I made several mistakes since I had to correct, so what's a few more? <laughs> what's a few more here? Oh, we gotta do more of that. So we're gonna work our way back here just to kind of clean up some of this mess off the counter. I'm gonna need that. And I should have just made the other two because they're mirrored. So I'll start pulling out the parts that I'm gonna need. And then we'll just stick these in here now while we're here. Because basically that's what they are. They're just the same thing but mirrored. I didn't look. So that was my bad. Hmm. These use the ball. No, these oh no, these are not mirrored. I'm glad no, I didn't do that because they're different. These are actually neutered that. These are just Technic bricks. And I'm looking for, oh there it is. And then the next thing is sticking these on here. Now these are friction, so I'm assuming these are probably like the black and white and color and the power button. And then they just, oh, I forgot to put, the, oh, I already got them in there. And then we need the regular 1x2 brick. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Black is not really an, a fun color to work with. It just seems rather bland. So there's the switching mechanisms there. And now we got to build two things that are mirrored. Starting with some slopes. Okay, making sure that the old camera is still recording. I just got done editing part one of this. <laughs> so yeah, I mean... Okay, so it goes like this. So part one is done, I just got to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be and then write up all the meta, then it's done, and then the video portion's been edited. And I'm uploading it now and it's uh, it's just taking its merry little time. All right. These fit here. Yeah, so like I said before, though, I mean, this is a very relaxing build. I just kind of wish I didn't have to rush through it. That's just how it is. Okay, ooh, this one's pretty nasty. Let me bring this over here. So, you got to put all that up there. There's so many pieces, where do you start? 
you know, where do you start with this? What I'm gathering is these go here. So this obviously snaps into here somewhere. And that's not the right color. Let's lock all this together first. And then that other one by three plate. When I was a kid, I never liked really following the instructions when I did this stuff. I always just built freehand or tried to build it from the picture on the box. Usually just looking at the picture, I always did pretty well. Okay. So, sorry if you can't really see this and to keep changing the angles and stuff kind of takes a lot. So I have to... So that's what these little arched pieces were for. They're for the little buttons in here. So this is pretty much their equivalent to uh, like an escutcheon or something that goes around the switch. So that's pretty much what they were trying to achieve here. So, it is starting to look like something, huh? And I think these go on here too. Yeah, I'm just going to slowly just put this together and just take my time on it. This is the last installment. So, got the on-off switch. I think that's pretty much it there. Let's take a look. Yeah. Well, I've got to put these over here. Yeah, on the other side of the building guide right here, yeah, they do show those. Here I was kind of confused, but they show the correct ones over there. So I was indeed right. I couldn't figure that out. Well, I don't see any more of those. I even put the right ones in there. Yeah. I'm missing another set of these. So, let me look here. Yeah, there's four of those. Okay, there's one. Probably just buried in there. You know how I am. So let's start setting the big stuff out of the way until we find it. Okay, there it is. It's just buried. Alright, so the next thing we do is we shove some golden rods in here. Gold. Obi-Wan lightsaber sword. Swords. These just fit right in here. I don't want it to be butt up in there too much. This is probably the on-off. So I'm going to shove it all the way in first, and I'm just going to turn it a little bit and pull it out. Just a little. Yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine had an Atari as well, and his was hooked up to a, an old black and white. Probably a TV back from the 50s. It had like a semi-rounded screen. I don't know if it would have been a Philco or something, but I remember it was just, you know, more like a portable. And I thought, man, that's got to be brutal. Okay. So on the sides here, we got to put some jumper plates on there. But I was like, oh, I was lucky when I was a kid. I didn't. My color TV was falling apart, and you had to unplug it and stuff. Uh, only one dude that I knew had a remote control TV. And back in them days, a remote control color television was expensive. Like a little 13-inch was like three to four hundred dollars. 
I was just lucky to have a TV in my room. All my friends either didn't have one, they had a little black and white they had to share. Like they'd have a few brothers and sisters, they had to move the TV in different rooms. I didn't have to share mine. Mine was just a big old 19 inch Trinitron. Trinitron. I didn't have to share it, but still. I didn't get my first remote control TV until I was a teenager. But I had to work for that. Well, it look good now. I wonder if those cards fit in there. I'm sure they probably do. Kids today, though, are spoiled, I'll tell you. I mean, they just. Yeah, you know, they just. They get everything they want, and. They don't have to work for anything, and. Okay, rotate this around. Okay. We're going to have to skip a stud here. Place that there. So those are just barely tacked in. You could pretty... I think you could make this work if you wanted to. I think this could be made to actually function. Okay, so now we're going to be putting a bunch of colorful slopes on here now. And these have to be right over these seams here. I think it's just meant to lock everything together so it doesn't flake apart and all that stuff. And the helicopter's flying overhead at 12.45 in the morning. Well, I'm racing through this. Alright, now we got to flip it over again. I'm going to stick the inverted things in there. And then we put the rubber bands in. I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to work. See how that performs. Right now I'm getting confused again. Let's start pulling all these slopes and stuff out of here. There's another one. The ones over here are kind of confusing, so i got to really kind of take a look there. They're, they're not even. One of them's even. Or maybe that's how they both are. That's why sometimes the arrows confuse me. So I'll show you. I just glanced. I thought this one went down here somewhere. No, it goes right next to the other one. You don't know that. Sometimes those arrows could be the death. Especially when they're red like that. Now we got to put the rubber bands here. So, so that's pretty much set up like that already. I already opened this up just to see what was in here. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we just loop them around once. All right, let me, uh... Is that how they're supposed to be? Huh. Mine's just kind of twisted. Maybe that is. It's twisted. Well, I think you, I think that's how it's supposed to be. So, oh yeah, this feels authentic. This one here is kind of sticking a bit. Here's probably out of alignment. Yeah. Okay. Where's the buttons at? I don't remember my Atari having gold stuff on it, but we'll, we'll find out here eventually. Now, we still got to be careful with these corner tiles here. These are just sitting in here, too. We want to make sure those are staying pretty flush.
And we put these on the top. I can't remember if mine had this orange or was it silver. Alright. This has got some weight to it. And it's basically slopes, and I'm glad now I'm checking because there's a one by one. So we gotta start with the one by one on the left and work our way down. <laughs> So, Lego, you could make a one by three of these slopes. I wouldn't mind a bit. See, I bet it fits right inside that. And this probably rests right on this top piece over here. I'd like to see how this goes in. I really don't see anywhere where it would connect to it. Unless it just sits in there, but... So far this thing's pretty much locked together. I don't know why it would, but... Yeah, but if you do the right snot method, you can make some stuff that's pretty seamless with these slopes. Yeah, I was thinking about another type of restaurant. I want to build another restaurant for you guys and gals. I was thinking, what would be fun? You know, for a good build for the end of the year. I already did the McDonald's, but what else could I build? And I was thinking of something, you know, what would be cool well, for the summer. Well, by the time I get done building it, it'd be winter. So, what would be a good winter restaurant? <laughs> I could think of some places already, but, you know, not really sure yet. And then the switches go on. And that's what these are for. Now, just like when I build my campers, though, put this notch side on the bottom. So. So, yeah. I mean, it's pretty sturdy. But I think that's meant to fit in there all the way. Okay, it is, see? You, don't be scared, just push just push the living daylights out of that and stick that right in there. But I'm going to keep my notch here at the bottom. So, we'll leave the Atari off. We don't want those sparks flying out at us. <laughs> Hook it up to the TV. In fact, if you could build a life-size Lego TV that just didn't work, Oh, I'm sure you could really make this really stand out. Somebody will probably go, ooh, video games, I want to play. They sit there and try to turn it on, nothing will come up on the brick-built screen. And I'll be like, oh, it's not real. I'm like, yeah, it's not supposed to be. It's just, that's meant for, That's meant to tell you you got to get up and read. <laughs> okay, we want it on, we want it on color. All right. Yeah, I'm probably going to be playing around with the controls more than anything else. So this is actually a... I'm not going to say a functioning piece of uh, memorabilia. But it's pretty close. Alright. Yeah. I mean... So, I, I'm not going to say that the, bunk, the buttons function. That would be an understatement there. You know, the buttons don't really, they function, but they don't do anything. Could you make this into a real model? If you have the chassis from one that works, you could make this into a, you could probably remake this. Just re-engineer just the cabinet up just a bit to hold actual electronics. Make sure it's got adequate ventilation. I'm sure you could. Because that looks pretty darn real. I wonder if it, let's cheat a little bit. Let's see. Let's let's play some asteroids. I wonder if that fits in there. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm really liking this build. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is strong in there. All you have to do is blow out the cart, and you're ready to go. Blow out the thing in there too. 
And I remember this little goofy thing in the middle. So this is pretty near close to original. Really close. The designers did a really good job with this. Because this is just built right here. This is just a very fun little build. This, if they broke this manual down into portions, this would have made a great family project to build. I think these go on the back of this, but I'm going to build pre-build them first. There's a lot of building techniques in here you could use for your own stuff, too. Lots of building stuff. Okay, now the plate. Put a plate first, then the brick. I mean, snot. That's pretty much what we're doing here and get that off there, throw that in the recycle bin. Okay. Oh imagine trying to build this with that Lego instructions app. My goodness, this would have been a nightmare. We would still be working on bag one. That's how bad it would be. <laughs> Not a whole lot left. Okay, so the springy switches, well, it's, they're here, and, whoa, so basically they show this facing like this. We're going to snap this here, and I bet that locks in there. That's exactly what it does. There we go. Let me do the same one on this one here, too. Well, I put it in... Wait. Oh, I put it in upside down. Whoops, my bad. My apologies. There we go. It's like, <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Do I take that apart? Did I make another mistake? And... That's it. So this actually sits in here. Now, how does this sit in here? It looks like it's just... Um, alright, so, okay, I'm assuming it sits down right in between these slopes, let's see here, and that's exactly what it does, let's pull this out here so I can make sure we're going to have to, finger this a little bit here. Yep. I wouldn't pick this up from here, though. Except for this sagging in the middle, though. I mean, maybe they're trying to go for authentic, because I remember mine did kind of sag, but it was also molded here, too. What they could have done is made a little slope in here, so this actually would rest up on top of this. Like, put something here somehow, where they could have done that. But this is a... Uh, this is pretty heavy. This is not light. And that wraps up the... I think this wraps up... So this shows you right here. Let's try it out and see. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's what it does. Looks just like the picture. So we did it right. And in 1982, Atari modeled the VCS as the Atari 2600 video computer system. Elevate the original model number and its new, more powerful sibling was introduced, the Atari 5200, which I did own. I don't have it anymore. Um, 5200 just looks more futuristic. <laughs> it's not nothing like this. We think of Atari, this is the one we think of the most. Nobody cares about the 5200 or the 7800. And that's what we have left for bag 14. Okay, as much fun as this was, this was a very pleasant build, but now we got to build a game controller. And how I know that is because, well, that's what we're building next. <laughs> so.
So they got the string here. Let's see if I can open this up without breaking any fingers. And usually I never can find a pair of scissors around here. So well, I got it opened anyways. All right, let's see here. Oh, this feels like a regular power cord. Oh, that's really flexible. I mean, um, was it about two foot long? I'll set that back there. Remember, the cords on those things are much longer, too. Okay. Just like with the original, you only got one controller with it. Let's see how good this build is. This is so bag 15 is just strictly the game controller, as far as we know of. And so far, out of this whole build, the last 14 bags, I'm I'm about, I would say about 95% satisfied. Build quality seems pretty good. The only thing I'm disappointed in, like I said, is the stickers. That's the only thing that's dropping the value down on this for me. But other than that, everything else here, I am just liking this project. This brings back a lot of memories. So, especially if you're an older gentleman like myself, and you've played this in the past, and you still have yours. You know, this would make a great little conversation piece. Okay. Don't worry, I'm working my way up here. As a matter of fact, let's just do it like this here. Now, honestly, if you were to build this for you to actually play with, like if you were to got an, a, a 2600, I think the honest problem would be to replicate the control in LEGO because I think that would be a showstopper there trying to make that work where it wouldn't break or whatever. Now, I don't know how they're going to do the joystick. Does it move back and forth? Does it move in four positions, eight positions? We don't know yet. Now, looks like I'm going to have to really be careful here and build this. But of course you could just put some tacticals in here if it does actually function. You could just do that and use a real power cord and build your controller completely from scratch. Looking for a turn style. Let's start pulling out bricks here. Ooh, a yellow cross axle. Cool. Yeah, I don't really see those that much. I wish they'd bring out colorful Technic sets. Well, I am looking for that little... Oh, there it is. So I guess this thing is actually going to function. I know the Atari later on actually had, um, you know, two buttons, and they started getting a little more elaborate with controllers and such. And, you know, now with controllers of today, uh, my, I use an Xbox controller for the PC gaming. Uh, I don't really use controllers all that much. Uh, I, you know, I used to use them for console. When I started switching over to PC gaming, it was hard to get used to it. And now, you know, some games need a controller, like old school games. Like if you're playing one of these games on an emulator or something like that. Of course, you're going to need to use a controller because that's pretty much how you play them back then. But something like these newer games, I mean... I don't think a controller can handle 200 keys, especially with all the simulator games going on and such. So, well, there it is. That's pretty much what it is. Alrighty. You got to multitask here, and uh, 
And this piece here wants to keep sliding out. So yes, to answer someone's question, what would you do if you had an unlimited number of parts? I mean, I'd be building crazy stuff like this all day. I'd be like, work? What is work? What do you, what's that language you speak of there, work? I'd be too busy doing this. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's offset. Make sure you're seeing what I'm seeing here. So it is offset a bit. I bet the controller thing goes in here, but I'm pressing on this and it is wiggling around. And we got to build more stuff with it too. Alrighty. Um, so we got to build two of these things. So I think half this bag is probably full of Technic. Matter of fact, this would work well with the transformer set. If you got that one, there you go. Set it right next to this. But I kind of wish I had got the uh, the TV, the Nintendo TV. But I don't know if the Nintendo was built one to one. I would have loved to review that, but you know, at the time that was a little bit out of my price range. Oh, there we are. And okay, we need those bearings. If you notice, though, uh, the further I build, the faster I go. It's because half the time I'm spending going through parts, just rifling through things. So, like right now, I'm looking for another one of those little yellow bushings. things. I you know I never really have uses for these rubber things. I've used them for like a diving board or something, but to use them for this, I you know, never would have figured. I think it goes in the bottom tube. Yes, it does. And we sandwich these in here. So what I'm gathering is, let me just set this in here now, and this, oh, this is going to not be fun to put together, <laughs> let's see here, okay, so if you get this and you're stuck, yeah, um, so this is meant to simulate the control. So this last one here is going to be a bit of a challenge to put on. I forgot to put these on there. This is just barely hanging on. But if it's sandwiched in, it ain't going to matter. All right. But we don't have a stick on there yet. I think that's what that yellow shaft is for. joystick. Oh, just hand me the joystick. We never called them controllers. Oh, just hand me the just hand me the joystick. <laughs> you know, matter of fact, you know, if you if this is pretty decent here, you know what you could do? If somebody's willing to actually do that, they could build a whole entire upright cabinet for an art for a for an arcade game. That would be pretty brutal, but... OK. 
Okay, just remember there's two 1x4s that go behind there, and don't forget your 1x1s. They go here, two stacked on top of one another. And you notice we haven't done any stickers in a while. And no, I don't miss the stickers. <laughs> Just haven't done them. Okay. Why do you have a, two different colors in there? Hmm. Okay, um, looks like we're building the sides of the controller now. Oh, we got to put these over here too. Okay, I'm glad now I checked. It's like, are we going to do a do around the whole thing? Yeah, I guess we are. And this studs not on top method is good for interlocking your joints too. You know, back when I was a kid, or if you had parents or grandparents, or whatever, we used to stack the bricks on top of one another like this, and that's you not know, how you traditionally build with Lego, but Lego has sure changed a bunch since I've been a kid, um, you know. In fact, when I got back into this as a hobby, it was starting to change to the point where snot methods were becoming more common. I mean, literally just starting to become common more, and that sort of thing. Well, we don't need that. I need the other guy I can't find. Oh, there he is. See, I'm spending a lot of time finding parts. That's kind of the sad thing that takes forever. And then a regular plate goes on the top here. Now I gotta find one more of these. They kind of look like this. I gotta set those off to the side. When everything is black though, it's. Oh, here it is. It's just not really appealing. This build's fun, it's just the color is just. Uh, you know. This is, like I said, just meant to be a novelty item. And so this must be the sides of the controller. And then after that, a bunch of two by twos. And we got to make two of these. Well, I've already made them, you know, because I'm doing them in duplicates. Oh, I was watching a news clip about this shopping mall. I can't remember what state it was in, but they found a long since abandoned Burger King restaurant. Literally stuck in the 80s. And I watched this clip and I was like, wow, we had something similar to that when I was a kid. It was a Burger King. I'm like, why don't they just reopen that up and leave the decor the way it is? Don't update it. Don't make it gray. And it was inside of a shopping mall. But I'm like, don't update it. Don't make it. Don't make it like the Mac don't make it like McDonald's and all these other places where it's just gray on the outside and boring on the inside. I mean, nobody wants to eat in a place like that. I, you know. Fast food was meant to be fun. It wasn't meant to be boring. You know, the decor. You know, it was. It's like McDonald's. Kids today go into McDonald's. I, I even get requests. Can you build a modern restaurant? And I'm like looking at like a modern McDonald's and, and stuff. I'm like, no offense, but these are boring. You want me to build that? Yeah, it'd be cool. It's white, tan, and gray. I got plenty of those colors. But I'm like, no. It's not fun. I want to build something that looks more retro. 
like this, you know, build something modern. Okay. I gotta build two of these. These are the other sides here. And I was thinking about because this this Atari had some studs on the top. I'm sure you can probably smooth all that out if you want to. You know, I take these off and replace them. I think that's meant for you to grab onto this. So I think that's what it's meant for is for you to just to grab on and pull the little secret drawer out. Matter of fact, you could probably use that to hide things in. And no, don't get any of those ideas in your head. Okay, so we got that done. And then... Now we already pulled all these out. <laughs> now let's just put all those in there then and be done with it tonight. And after that, a couple of these, I think it's gray. No, they're black. You have to watch your colors very carefully in here. Because you could literally just mess this up without in any intention of messing it up. You literally would just mess it up. These are just duplicates, so we don't care which way these go here. Okay, I already got all those there. Um, and now we got to get those brackets. I think it's this. No, it's the upwards one. That's a downwards. I think it goes like that. That's exactly how it goes. Yeah, but I have to give Lego credit. This is uh, this is really kind of interesting here. This is not a boring. This is not like that micro build that I did where I was just hating that. This is a. Uh, you know, this is not something I normally would ever build, but if even if you're just getting into this, and this seems pretty interesting, or if you're just a, a video game memorabilia guy or gal, this set here will. This set here will really keep you occupied for several, probably a few days. All right, so All right, so it doesn't really show you here. So this round, half round brick with bow goes here, or arch, whatever you want to call it, and. Let's just put them both on there. And I think this, these brick with two studs go here. I saw these, but I couldn't see these at the bottom. I'm just guessing that they go there because it was in the manual, but I didn't see any one by two regulars. So I think that's where these go. They go right underneath these arch pieces. They go like that. And that's it. And uh, okay, so they go like this. I think. Oh, I'm missing one of these here. Oh, there it is. Um, I think these clips go at the bottom. They show these here at the top. I don't see anything up here. So I think it just goes like this. See, it's starting to come apart there, but only because I was forcing that on. But now this is pretty sturdy. This is pretty sturdy. 
you're going to put this on. Make sure you check your work before you commit to that. So I think this is just the legs that go on the bottom here. If they're doubling it up as that. That's pretty cool. And then the next thing is tiles. Well, you actually have to put a four here and a three. Oh, okay. Oh, there's already one there. Hmm, these, these things didn't get tile or stickers on them, huh? So if I need those tiles, I'll just rob them from this. <laughs> So obviously the way this is, this is probably just a four position control. Well, this just feels very stiff, but I haven't put that in there yet. We'll say that for the finale. I don't want to do any spoilers or anything. Nobody wants a spoiler. Okay. Um... couple of angular plates. We got to make four of these. Just take two of these gray ones, and, or four of them, and then you just take two of the one by two plate number ones and drop them on top. And then once you do that, you can easily do it. Put those right in there. Or you can do these two first, but gets to be a little bit of a challenge. And then we got to put in, let's put the plates in here for markers. So the plates show they show them right here. And that's only held with one stud. There's one stud here, and there they are there. Yeah, that's only held in with one stud, so that might be just like a filler plate or something. That's... And these sit right there. So, I'm not sure why they did that. It's probably a filler or something. Or to fill in that corner and offset something a bit. Okay. And this goes in here in the back. All right. Sorry if I'm not really talkative now. It's not that I'm thinking or anything. It's just now. It's uh, I'm getting a little tired. And this week has not been too kind to me, so yeah. Don't worry. We got this bag and another bag left to do, and I think the other bag is the last cart. So this build is broken up to where it's mixed. It's not, it's meant to not be so boring, I'm guessing. And we're just building one of these. These were building only one controller. The original would have only came with just one. goes with the gray side down here. Where's the button on the side? Okay, so I see what they're doing. They got this, uh, they got that offset, which is cool. It makes it look authentic. So this is starting to feel like 
you know, a real one. I do have a couple of those in storage too, and they, they're pretty big. <laughs> if you never played Atari, well, uh, it's not your uh, it's not your Xbox controller, that's for sure. It's big, it's clunky, and it only has one button. If you're lucky, you have two buttons. Sometimes they'd have them on the top of the joystick too. But back then, you have to remember, 70s and 80s technology wasn't like we have today. There was no surface mount. They were just introducing that for more of the higher end stuff. So now this next step is going to be pretty busy because we're going to be doing tiles and plates right there. So, um, now I have a feeling some are going to watch this if they get stuck on something. So, if this video helps you out with troubleshooting some things, let me know. <laughs> um, if you're making mistakes like I am, well, then you're not you're not the only one that's made boo boos. You just just have to. Ooh. <laughs> You gotta be careful there. Just have to do what I'm doing. Just slowly work on it a bit. Okay, I made a mistake. Um, and that's a heck of a place too because I can't get that... That's supposed to be a flat tile. Oh, I got... Okay, that's easy. We, okay, whatever you do, just take your... Really take your time on this. This is... Uh, don't put the corner plates in. Just put the tiles in first. And just hope nothing falls down in there. You know, it's hard to believe we're using a toy. It's like building the Transformer. We're using a toy to build a toy. Do you classify this as a computer? An appliance or a toy? You know, the original. Okay. Taking it, that goes in the middle. Yes, it does. It must be where the power cord connects here. Oh, no stories about my... Well, yeah, a little bit about my car. Uh, <laughs> if anybody's really wanting to know, uh, I got the dimmer switch to work. Everything's working as it should. Just got to put the dash together, but I got to get a new AC control valve that controls the uh, vacuum pressure. And, well, that I just have to get going. And, of course, these parts they don't make anymore. It was only available for one year. And those sources pretty much are almost dried up. So I got to find it. That's the button. Oh, okay, we got to put the other stuff on the top. Well, this is the fun part now. If you got the tile here, and I always thought these buttons were orange, but no, I guess they're red. And you had to do this. If you were left-handed, I'm sure you did this. That was like, pow, 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 pow! All right. Can't wait to see this work. <laughs> I'm getting there. We're getting close. Now, by all means, I don't think you're not meant to get aggressive with this, so. And we are going to be doing the joystick now. And if you play these, this is something that may sound a little gross for some, but if you play these for a while, the controller starts stinking up really bad. This is the, you get all sweaty and stuff. All right, that's not going to work. Hmm. Here we go. Put these on one at a time here. One, two, three, 
four and five. I'm taking it those dishes go in there too. Yeah, I remember when we poured all that out and I said, man, we're gonna have to go through all this to get to the to lighten up the load. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, but you don't want to rush through this one here. This is this is a keeper. So yeah, I mean well, you use this for a handlebar for your for your bicycle. Okay. And that goes upside down. And it sits inside there. I don't know if that's supposed to stick up like that or not. Well, it is. Now, does it actually work? I'll be damned. <laughs> it feels stiff. Now, you got to be careful. You don't want to break this. This is not meant for you to really roughhouse with it, but, you know... Of course, my hands are pretty big. Um, this does feel original. It really does. If I can get mine out, I'd bring it in here and show it to you. Well, we're not done yet because we have no way to plug it into the back of the console. Now we are going to have to build the cord for it. Isn't that fun? Yeah. We're going to have to build the cord now. I don't know what kind of jack it was. It was one of the ones that you'd use for your computer now. I mean, now this is kind of prehistoric because what do we use now? Uh, Bluetooth. <laughs> Which, honestly, I'm spoiled. Cord seems pretty big. I don't know how we're going to attach it to this. Of course, I think these pegs probably go in there too. That's exactly what they do. Oh, cool! Look, Lego math. Okay, so these just fit in here. You know, matter of fact, when I was working on my AC, this is almost the same, if I can even get that in there, as the vacuum hoses you'd use to control your air pressure in your vacuum system in your car. Well, this is not fitting in here like they showed. So, um... Like, I'm having a hard time getting that in there. It's supposed to fit in there, and I can't get it in there. So, I may have to get like a nail or something, like a, a punch. Well, no, never mind. I got it in there. So, you're really going to have to um, really kind of just work that in there, and it's like this. Now, when you put that in there, you don't want to just yank that back out because it would probably be just as tough to get that back in there. So you're just going to have to just kind of wiggle it, or probably make it easier. Warm it up a bit. You don't want to do this in the winter time, because trust me, you will not be able to get that on there if this hose is very cold. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting it on there too. So, by the time you get that on there, just really make sure that's mushed down good. All right. And we connect part of this up to here. Well, it shows it goes in here. It's 
take a look here. It shows the ends here, which is what I did. Unless I'm missing something. Oh, okay, it's one of these things. It's like, well, how does it even go in there? Now it goes on here. And then it snaps in here. Okay. And then the other end... <laughs> the other end just goes here. If you don't believe me, it just sits in there. That's all it is, just one stud holding in there. Nothing elaborate, just right there. And that's it. So bag 15 was the controller, and this is what we have left. So yeah, this is, uh, so far we already got this thing made. Okay, time to wrap this up with the final bag which is 16 well let's just set this out of the way and it looks like we had one piece left over from bag 15 okay all right so the last thing is the last cart we're going to need the sticker sheet here and a little bit of ranting <laughs> You know how I'm about stickers, so let's get going here. And yeah, we're at that point now where we can finish some stuff up. We got some color this time. So I've been, I took a break and just kind of tinkering with some tutorials and well, possible tutorials. Someday they'll be where you can build them, but, you know, just trying to you know, kind of get a feel for how I want to assemble things. And still, to this day, when I read comments about you need to rush through your tutorials and make them faster. I've already done them as fast as I can do them. So now the old default is, well... Just buy the building guide and you can build as fast as you want. Of course, that upsets a few people, but that's just how it is. Now, this cart's a little different. It's got some different styling and stuff. So, this is the one that just says Atari 2600. And I looked at the price on the Atari. And kind of off a little bit on the date. Uh, the original console, I think, was really, you know, this was released in 1977. It cost like a hundred and eighty-nine, hundred ninety-nine dollars, which, you know, that's what you got. That was entertainment back then. Now, what does that get you today? Um, uh, how much would the Atari be worth in today's money? A lot. It would be worth probably about eight to nine hundred dollars. That just shows you, you know, how the stuff is advanced and pretty cool. I'm gonna put this tile in here now. It says put the sticker on it, but I need to line this up with these two tiles here. So that might be my easiest way to do is setting it on there first. Like, let's just put the sticker on here now and get it out of the way. Must be a easy night for stickers. This one didn't even go in without a hitch. It didn't give me any problems. I think games were like 30 or something dollars. So they were pretty pricey, you know, for what you got. But games haven't gone up that much. When I was in a teenager, you know, just 
Nintendo games in general are forty to fifty dollars. And today, what are they now? Sixty dollars on up. They haven't haven't gone up that much in price, so. which is which is good. You know, I don't have to pay a fortune for them. Use with joystick controller. Ooh, can't wait to play with the joystick. Well, that just flew out of my hand. Alright. And this sticker here looks like it's discolored. Maybe that's how it is. a little discolored there. Huh. Or maybe that's just how it is. It doesn't show it in the picture though, so I'm just only assuming. Still gotta put a few more stickers on, but yeah. Let's see it's a little discolored there. But just about done for the night with this. That means I can get hardcore back into the mocks again. Well, if I can find a 1x2 flat tile, I'll start pulling out all the tiles until we find it. There we go. You know, these do bring back memories. Centipede. Now I think that's number 14, and, and it is. I've got one more sticker left on that, and that's it. Flip it over and place these here. So this is almost built like the same. So I'm going to build that little shelving unit that fits in there. Well, that's what I call it anyways. All right. At least we got some other color. Not if I don't even see any blue here. Just see a lot of green and yellow and brown and black. But yeah, when I was a kid though, when I played Atari, um, it was just magical, you know. Especially when you play Pitfall, you know, this is, Pitfall was probably the only game at the time I could think of that was a side scroller. And there was some top and bottom scrollers, but the only thing bad about Pitfall was you couldn't go up down, you can only go left or right. The only thing you can go up and down is the little ladder or fall down in the pit. And we're just like, man, I wonder what, what's behind those trees or those bushes, you know? And now today, it's like, I remember when I got Grand Theft Auto 3. That was like amazing. I remember when Spyro for the PlayStation came out and Crash Bandicoot. I was like, wow, you know. And now it's like you play those games compared to the new stuff now. Like take Minecraft, for example. I mean, a lot of these games have improved. It's like Pac-Man. You know, they have Pac-Man World, which is a 3D version. You still do the mazes just for little side missions, but... It's like, this stuff is 
awesome. You know, kids today are lucky. They got the good games. So when I was a kid, this was what we all we had, you know. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have all the fancy bells and whistles. I mean, we were, a lot of us were lucky to have a color TV. But the gameplay was lacking, but it, like I said, it was something to do. You'd have your friends over and you would just try to beat you, beat each other's scores. We had Lego back then. Lego wasn't as advanced. There we go. Now you got to be careful. This is kind of flimsy here. Not the most stable sub-assembly. See, it splits. So, well, this one here is just not cooperating today, is it? Matter of fact, why don't they just shove these in here like this? Would have been easier. Instead of having the tile on there, this last one's going to be a challenge. I'll leave that off there first. Oh, wait a minute. I think I got it backwards. Let me make sure here. Could be that I'm just getting a little tired, too. Okay, it does go like that. My bad. See? Even perfect people make mistakes. We'll mash that right down in there. There we go. So we'll do a really rough review on this, and then I'll do the final on the main if you want more of a polished review. But, you know, the thing about these live reviews is we talk as we go. Uh-oh, hold on. Memory card's about to run out. Okay, I'm glad I caught that in time. But yeah, about the live reviews, you know, we can easily um, looks realistic. <laughs> you know, we can discuss the stuff as we build. It's like taking live notes, and then we can come in later on and just do whatever we want. <laughs> and when I do the final review, I know exactly what I had to say. You know, all that stuff. Oh wait, these are supposed to go on the outside. My bad. See, I made a mistake again. Tell I'm getting a little tired. Oh, I forgot to put the corner plates on here. We'll just put them on there now while we're on this side then. It makes more sense to me. And... Yeah. Just starting these out looks like something you'd see in Minecraft. Like a Minecraft set. I don't have any of these in this green, which is cool. Wish they were in upwards, because I could have used those for another build. Whoops. Okay. Yep, getting a little sloppy here.
And where is the last one? Because I don't have that piece in that color. Uh, yeah, where did she go? Let's make sure here. Yeah. Um, make sure it's not in my hands. I'll check on the floor. Right, before we do anything, let's start sorting things out. These are all the cheese slopes. These over here. Anything that's that green, we'll set it over here because I could get confused. It could be buried under here. We don't know. This could have been the dark green, but these are facing upwards. And I, like I said, I don't think I have this piece. So if it's missing, it's missing. And yeah, uh, it's a uh, very last thing, and we're missing it. So. What do I do? Well, I know where it went. It went on the floor. It's the other one that fell earlier, so here it is. <laughs> okay. Hey, I didn't blame Lego this time. It was just one of those things. Alright, so now we got to come in and decorate this with tiles, make it look all pretty. Well, the micro builds for these are not too bad. It's just how it is. So I'm just going to do that and blast through a quick review. Then I'll do the final review after this, and that's Betty Bye for me. <laughs> but yeah, this has been a very enjoyable build. It's not. It wasn't dry. It wasn't boring. The stickers, yeah, a little bit on the the high side, but I'd say this thing's probably a seven to eight, real easy. It's just. Now, if this thing was fully 100% printed, right, probably at worst, this bill would get would be a nine and a half. Why nine and a half? Just uh, nothing will ever be a total ten. Nine and a half. Close to a 10, maybe. Just about there, guys and gals. Just about not. Yes, we're just putting on nothing but tiles and jumpers at this point. So I'm just setting jumpers right now in here, or just plates in general, and tiles and such until we can get the whole thing done. See, so yeah, all good things must come to an end. So I'm hoping I can wrap this up real quick before the memory overflows again. <laughs> because if not, I'm going to have to edit some videos. I like to keep a copy on the camera you know, before I do that. But the only thing I've really been filming is this. Alright, so that base is done. Dark brown. I actually need those for the 1960s home. And at that time, I didn't have a whole lot of those. Or I don't think they even made that color when I design first originally designed that house. So it was kind of like, well, we'll just use the colors that LEGO has provided us. And then that's what, what I did. I used the colors that they gave me, and that would have been the end of that. I think this goes in here too. Yep. But to me, honestly, I think the 9.5, you know, there were some things that were mildly repetitive, but nothing like 
I would just ding this thing off and flat out give it a, a bad grade, a bad score. It's just stickers. I think the pyramid was like, an, you know, the um, pyramid of Giza, that was like a nine and a half there, nine, nine and a half or something. It was pretty high. Um, some parts were a bit repetitive, but nothing too major. This one here has got a cone. It goes right here. There's one with just a regular round brick or a nose cone. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. This one goes here, and the nose cone one goes here. There's two different types you have to build. Now, centipede, and that does look pretty interesting. So I think that's all that's left is the little stuff. So let's uh, get started here and... After I film this, the next night I'm going to start working on tutorials. Now, I don't do those on here, so I'm interested in legal tutorials. You'll actually have to go to my main channel to watch those. Let's make sure I don't have to build a bunch of those. Okay. Just about done, guys and gals. Just about done. So, I'm using these for the centipede legs. Pretty cool. This is my go-to part now for door for door handles. Those are just barely sitting in there too. I would have just used a brick with uh, a number, a brick number, a one by two plate number one. With the holes or just some studs to put in there to really secure those down. I think they were either trying to cut cost or to keep it as slim lined as possible. See, I'm mostly in for durability. All right, we got to make two of these things here. It's almost the same as that. Okay, and. got to check that camera every so often make sure it's not a uh, doing something it shouldn't be doing now what you know when you watch a review on YouTube or just any review in general on any kind of product some people just watch one specific person or read one specific blog and you're not really supposed to do that you know you can do it as you wish but for me I always go through and read other people's reviews diaries on a product or something you know like if you're watching just my reviews only you may be missing something from another person because I can't cover everything and we all see Lego sets differently so, my review is just as accurate for me. So, if you watch somebody else's review, they may cover something that I didn't cover. You know, he may point out some weaknesses and strengths. And it's all about opinions at the very end. So, let's say, for example, I just say this is probably one of the most horrible sets in the world. And you just watch me, you're going to believe it. But if you watch nine other people and they say this is the best set, maybe I just had an off day or I just didn't like the build. So you just have to use your own judgment. If we all say the same thing, then it's probably a good set. If we're saying different things, and you just pull out what you want. And you start from there. Okay, so it looks like the one with the plate goes in the middle what I'm gathering so you can set it down okay I'm 
This thing's kind of hard to really hold on to. And like we're building the head again. I think we're building the head, I don't know. I still remember a couple of years ago, somebody literally chewed me out and said I need to do this more professionally and stuff. And finally came out and said, well, you're looking for a professional review. Here, watch this YouTuber. He does reviews professionally. I don't. This is just my speculation. And he's like, will do, boss. And he unsubbed and everything, too. I'm like, well, okay. Well, I didn't need that on my channel. <laughs> That's like, you know... This is I, I everybody sees these sets differently. Like I see this differently. With me, this is a great little conversation piece. Is it good for family building? Not really. Unless all the stuff was broken down. Hold the phone. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. Okay. The one with the stick. Set the stick in here because this is going to be our identifier. They use two of the shallow ones closest to the stick. So these things are kind of barely hanging in there. So you just, when you put this together, the best thing to do is not mess with it. Now, is this build pretty sturdy? This seems pretty sturdy, but these, these micro builds, they're okay. Um, the two legs that are sticking out actually go, wait a minute, that don't make sense. Alright, so they have the stick here and they have this, oh, I see what they did. Alright, so what they did here, and it doesn't really matter, I don't think it matters doesn't really matter to me anyways. They have these alternated. And I'm just trying to put these on in such a way that the other ones don't fall off. I'm trying to make this as painless as possible here. You got that, and that's the head. Well, the head, the neck. Almost like a kimono dragon. Must mean we're going to shove something down in that hole. Mm -hmm. This may be a little tough. I need these for the little antenna whiskers, whatever you want to call them. I mean, we're getting close to finishing this up. It's not a whole lot left. Not too bad of a build. And then it just snaps on here. Okay. And he fits right in the middle here. He just sits right on these studs. So we'll set them right down in there. Okay, pretty good. And we got a couple more mushrooms to build. And the nose cone, one goes here. I mean, I don't know how critical these are, but like, I can't even get that in there. But it does fit. The short one goes here. Okay, it goes on this plate. You may have to wiggle him out of the way here. So 
something like that. That's what it shows in the manual too. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. And that's it. And how I know that is... It shows that this can plug into the back. But we're going to take a look at the control here in a second. So while I'm putting those away and getting all the parts, uh, uh, build quality, does it seem pretty stable? Yes, you know, for the most part of it being a novelty item, it does seem pretty stable. Okay. And, you know, see this just came off. <laughs> Would this work in a Lego city? No, not really. This does, says it plugs into the back, but this thing is so fragile, it's not even worth it. So I think it just plugs in here. Usually, player one usually usually is on this side here. It's pretty pretty close to the original. There we go. I mean, it's almost like we're ready to power this up and turn it on. <laughs> and of course, you can just take these and shove it in there if you want you know and if they would have just done this alone I would have been happy with it but this set comes with three little sub models and such and you know um, got the caddy you can take the game out when you're done the switches do work and stuff like that so I could turn it on you don't ever want to turn this thing on without a cartridge or just make some weird noises and some random colors on the screen See these right here all work pretty good. We want it in color. We got the thing to hold the games, and we have these. So, all in all, it's a very fun build. Um, sorry, you really can't see it all. Would I recommend this for a Lego City builder? You know, would this could you drop this in a city? Absolutely not. Maybe the micro builds. You could probably use these as exhibits for maybe a fun part. Maybe use these as little billboards. But other than that, though, I this is really kind of more meant as a you know just as a display piece for just for fun. This is just basically just a little conversation piece. Is set this in your game room or your Lego room, and it semi functions. It just looks. It just has the functionality. I wanted it. It's not actually playable. I wish they made this push. And of course, the joystick does move. Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't really want to get too aggressive with that. But all in all, though, I think it's probably an eight, probably an eight and a half at the most. And one more thing I forgot to mention is it's got a hidden treasure in here that pops out. So I'll have more of a detailed review on this. But yeah, I think this set retails for $200. When I was reading the documentation, what I, what some have said, is it's worth $200, um, 2,500 pieces? I'd say yes. It's got some pretty decent parts in here. So if you're looking for something with a source of parts, this could be it. It seems a bit steep for price, but if you could use most of the parts, yes. Um, novelty, you could. Matter of fact, you could even set, if you have one of those coffee tables that has a transparent top, like a glass top, you could set this inside there too, along with a real one, you know, this whole system in there. But in that though, I mean, if I were to set this somewhere, it looks like you can play this. It really does. But... The only thing that draws back, that draws uh, a negative to this, is the stickers. Build quality is pretty good. It kept my interest. It wasn't repetitive and stuff like that. So, um, and plus you get some micro builds as well. So, all in all, this is a it's a nice little novelty piece. Uh, it's nothing more. It's just a novelty piece. So I hope you enjoy this installment series of the Atari computer. Uh, gaming system, uh, set number 10306.